Hello, it's Sunday, April 8th, 2018, and as of this recording, I'm still depressed, but I'm not dead. So when I was a kid, I spent three years overseas in Japan. Um, it was a great experience, so I think... Uh, Although Alex and I are starting to wonder if maybe there was a problem uh, with me being there and having so much freedom. I think I might have hinted towards this last show and I'm still not ready to talk about it because I haven't quite figured it all out yet. Um, but while I was there, I went on a ski trip with some buddies of mine, some Japanese speaking, some not Japanese speaking. And in this little town, this little ski town where we were, there was a strip club of sorts um and we were you know gosh i don't know 13 14 maybe and you know we could get in not a problem and there was a lot of consternation going on with who wanted to go in some guys were like yeah i want to go in and you know some guys were like no you know what i have a girlfriend i don't really want to go do that i didn't have a girlfriend and I wasn't really sure I wanted to go in and, you know, I told the guys, no, I don't think I want to go in. And it ended up, I stayed with my one friend who, who used the excuse of having a girlfriend for not going in. And if I think about why I didn't want to go in, you know, I'm, you know, 14, 13 year old boy. So I'm really into, um, fascinated with female body, I guess you know, wanting to see all that I could see, I suppose. But I didn't want to go in, not so much because it would have been my first experience doing such a thing. Um, it, I didn't want to go in, not because of, I wasn't sure how I would want to act. Um, I, would, I didn't want to go in because I didn't know, I didn't want to have to be held accountable for how I would act, which I'm pretty sure would be being a wallflower. And I didn't want my friends to have to, you know, question me about it. Um, I knew I wouldn't know how to act and I felt a lot of pressure and I was very uncomfortable with that. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I explained that very well, uh, but uh, there it is. And let's get on with the show. I've talked in previous shows how we are getting ready to move. We live in Minnesota right now, St. Paul area, beautiful area. And uh, my, uh, I guess I'll repeat myself for those, maybe I did or didn't, but my ex has moved to the Charlotte, North Carolina area here in the United States. Um, Nora, once she found out about this, thought, wow, that's really far. Uh, it's a lot farther than they were in Michigan maybe we should move to North Carolina. And she said that we've told the kids and that's our plan to move to North Carolina. And that plan has taken a monster step forward this past week. We spent in the Raleigh area and we must've looked at 15 houses, uh, both for rent and for purchase. We put an offer in on a house. It's a uh, a little bit of a fixer upper though it's not um we hope the inspections will come back and tell us that the house is you know um fundamentally sound and you know is in in good shape uh you know the place where we fix it up is you know it needs carpet um the countertops are falling apart the there's a wood floor in the kitchen that needs to be refinished um and oh, there's no screens in the house for any of the windows, which is weird. So, you know, some stuff we want to get, get settled in to make it, make it our home. It's in a fantastic neighborhood. Um, we were looking at a rental house in the same area and we talked with some of the neighbors and people walking by, walking their dogs, waving, saying hello, people driving by, seeing us out on the front side, front, front lawn, you know, beeping their horn, saying hi. So really kind of cool. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, even got the kids a little bit looking forward to it, although they 
obviously naturally don't want to leave Minnesota and leave their friends behind in their school that they've known their whole life. But yeah, so, you know, big step forward in that process. And as long as the inspections come back without any major issues that would kind of scotch the whole deal, we are looking to close on June 4th. Uh, pretty exciting. Uh, looking forward to it. And my f real first experience in buying a home like this, uh, when I was, you know, my previous marriage, we moved into a, a um, mobile home community where we purchased the, the home, but uh, it was, wasn't quite like this with the, you know, the inspections and all that. So yeah, so we were gone for a week and I was really not looking forward to a big part of the trip because family vacations tend to make me real stressed out. Um, well, you know, I just get stressed out when I'm outside of my natural routine, my kind of habits, my, my comfort zone. Um, you know, I like to, when I'm not working, I like to go get bagels at, you know, a particular bagel shop. Um, I know where I can get my caffeine free diet soda, <laughs> uh, things like that. Um, you know, I'm a creature, creature of routine and a creature of habit. And when you take me out of that, you know, for if it be it a week or whatever, it kind of stresses me out. I feel like I don't have my comfort zone, which until recently I didn't realize I had a comfort zone. Um, so for what it's worth, you know, a trip with, with the whole family kind of really takes me out of that. But surprisingly, there was less stress from the trip than I thought there would be. Um, one area that does get me every time is driving with the family in the car. And this was true in my previous marriage when we were together as a family and I was driving or now with, with Nora and her kids driving is very stressful for me. I feel, um, ultra responsible for them. And part of it is driving Nora's car. She drives, she is a, a Honda pilot. Whereas I have a little Mazda three. So, you know, the, the pilot is a lot bigger. It handles a lot differently on the highway, especially at 70 miles an hour. Um, and I just feel really, I feel really stressed while I'm driving. Like, Hey, 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 pay attention to what that guy's doing. Extra careful or don't, don't pass the semi. <laughs> don't, uh, you know, don't go over the speed limit when it's, you know, there's a curve and it says 55 miles an hour, you better get down to 55 miles an hour. Whereas in my Mazda, I could, you know, take it at the posted 70 speed limit without any issue. Thankfully though, we were, we went as a family, so Nora could drive. Um, you know, we split probably 60, 40, something like that, which was really good. Um, it's, I'm not a very good passenger, <laughs> um, so I would try to sleep, and if I couldn't sleep, I was pretty much just egging Nora, say, hey, when's, when are we going to stop so I can drive again? So there was that. I mean, the trip was was good. Um, I found myself starting to feel a little more upbeat, even though there's a lot to do. So let me explain that. Um, you know, dealing with depression is makes lots of tasks daunting, right? Um, doing laundry is daunting. Cleaning the dishes is daunting. Um, cleaning the kitchen floor just still seems like a, a, a task that's way beyond me. And like I mentioned, there's things we want to get done. We have painting to do in the, in the new house, assuming we get it. Um, you know, taking, you know, getting the backyard in shape, getting the front yard in shape. Uh, you know, all those kind of things. And even though those things are looming, I feel pretty upbeat and positive about them. Not that necessarily I'm totally looking forward to them, but they all seem doable. Um, you know, with, with Nora and myself working together, it all seems very doable to me. So that's kind of a novel feeling for me as of late. Um, to say, hey, we're going to have to spend three days painting. And I think, oh, well, <laughs> and painting I hate to do, but you know, it seems like, uh, okay, yeah, we're going to paint. Let's do it. Um, so that's pretty good. Other things that were good. I met with my friend Julio today. And if you remember, Julio is the founder of the now defunct, um, defeat the stigma project where, um, he was speaking out for mental health 
um, and he ran across a couple different states, uh, stopping along the way at schools and whatnot, spreading the, the message of, you know, what mental illnesses are, what mental health is, and kind of defeat, reducing the stigma on, on those topics. Um, and it's always good to meet with Julio. He's a fascinating guy, and I always feel better about myself after um, spending time with him. And, you know, so why am I telling you guys all this? Um, the thing of it is, is that I feel I'm very reluctant. I'm very concerned about saying the words that I'm feeling better. And I think I've touched on this a little bit before, but, you know, the first part of it is, is I'm really waiting for the other shoe to drop for kind of the downswing that is seems to be naturally occurring in my life and it's a little bit uh i don't know what's the word i want to say uh, self-limiting we'll say um having this attitude right and i know it's it's a poor attitude it's a um fatalistic attitude i guess but nonetheless it's it's genuine and it's what i feel that yeah okay you're feeling a little bit better today but uh Remember two months ago, the way you were feeling? Well, yeah, that's coming back. Remember a year ago, how you were feeling? Oh, yeah, dude, that'll be here. That'll be here in no time. Uh, so that voice in the back of my head saying those things. So that's kind of, I guess, that's the the more illogical kind of, I'm going to jinx it if I say I'm feeling a little bit better. The other thing that I don't like, kind of, why I don't like saying it, and especially this is applies to Nora, is... I feel like, because I know that other shoe is going to drop, because I know that downturn is coming, that I'll be getting her hopes up if I say, hey, you know what, I'm starting to feel a little bit better, and maybe I can take on more tasks, or maybe I can, you know, be more social with the family or whatnot. And I just feel like I'm setting her up to feel like, you know, she she already got into the start of this relationship, um, knowing I had depression, but at, you know, not as deep a level as maybe I, I, I have had and even have right now. And then I had the suicide attempt, um, and she stuck with me and, you know, all the terrible months that followed there. And, you know, she's been through a lot and, you know, she's been a, a, a rock star through all of it. And I just feel like if I tell her, Hey, you know what? Um, I'm feeling better not all better. I'm long ways from all better, but I'm feeling better that she rightfully will get her hopes up and be like, phew, all right, good. This is really good news. And then, you know, what if next week I'm not, what if next week I can't get out of bed? What if next week I, you know, call out from work because I don't feel like there's any way I can get through the day because I'm crying or or whatnot. And I don't want to do that to her. I think it's probably, I know it's the wrong way to look at it, but I'd rather her, th her see and expect the status quo as opposed to having her expect, you know, more, more upbeat JP. I don't know. Does that make sense? Um, you know, I guess it's, it's the same thing as, as kind of not wanting to jinx myself, right? It's, it's, it's based in the knowledge that I at one point was a certain way in most of my life I felt a certain way and you know probably the illogical incorrect thinking that because I felt that because I have felt that that it, it's not going to go away and it's going to get worse and it could get worse tomorrow for no reason whatsoever that that anyone could point pinpoint yeah, feeling feeling better has, gives me uh, a, a certain level of anxiety and stress. So, how's that for weird and twisted, huh? So, some good news. Last month, the month of March, was the first month that I got over 2,000 downloads on the podcast. In fact, there were 2,090 downloads for the month of March, which was... Really, it's been kind of a little goal of mine for a while, and there were some months, there was one month it was like 1,900, and then 17, and 18, and um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for taking time to listen to the show, and 
you know, I, I, as soon as, of course, you know, I was kind of looking forward to it, but as soon as it happened, I was like, eh, okay, yeah, okay, 2,000 downloads. And uh, I told Julio this today, and he was like, wow, that's, that's amazing. Think of how many people that you've, you've touched or how many people maybe that you helped out. And of course, I downplayed it and said, eh, yeah, sure, whatever. But I guess I should be proud of it. I guess I should be more excited about it. I think what's all that's going to come from it is I'm going to have an, if, you know, if I do it again this month or next month, then I'll have a goal of 2,500 and then 3,000 and on and on. You know, if it continues to grow, I mean, I'm, I'm amazed that you folks still listen to me. Uh, I'm thankful for it. And I'm hopeful that you get something out of it, but you know, I don't know how long this will last. So that's a good thing. And yeah, this one's going to be a little bit short, guys. Um, I do want to try to get Nora sat down this afternoon to record a show with me that will be coming out later in the week. Uh, I can't promise it. She's got quite a bit going on today and then she likes to kind of decompress. So, you know, I think being on the pod makes her a little uh, anxious. So it's uh, counter to what she's going to try to want to do the rest of the day. So... Let me remind you guys how you can get a hold of me. You can reach me uh, via email at jamoki at gmail.com, facebook.com slash jamoki, at jamoki on Twitter, www.jamoki.info. Oh, and thanks to Bruce, a new listener, Bruce, who pointed out to me that the uh, email me form was broken on the website. And sure enough, it was, and I don't know that it ever was really working. Um, so if you've if you tried to get a hold of me that way and you had no luck and you're still interested, go ahead and give it a try again. I think I've got that fixed. So thank you to Bruce for helping me out with that. Yeah. Oh, and the tech. Oh, that's J-A-M-O-A-L-K-I, Jamoki. And you can text me at 248-648-1419. That is a text and voicemail only line. Uh, it, it will never ring and I can answer it. Um, as it's just a Google voice number that I don't have access to, um, for telephone calls, but I still would get text messages and I still get voicemails if they're left. Uh, I still get a voicemail every now and then from Michigan blood looking to get some of my typo negative. Um, so that's kind of interesting. If you can do me a favor and subscribe to the show in iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts from. That way you get them right when they come out. Uh, and while you're there on iTunes, go ahead and give me a five-star rating if you think I deserve it. Uh, if you think I deserve less, please go ahead and do that. But those of you who want to give me the big rating, great. That helps the show turn up more frequently in searches from other folks who are looking for things, looking for podcasts you know, with keywords depression or suicide. Yeah, I appreciate you guys so much for listening to the show. Um, I still have, you know, still looking for a couple more people maybe to read my, my book. Um, I did send it out to one fan, uh, almost anonymously and I haven't heard back yet. So I don't know if that's good or bad, but, uh, we'll see. So guys, thank you so much. Um, I hope you all are doing well. I hope you all are safe. Um, I hope you're having more better days than worse days. Um, and if you want to chat, if you want to get something off your chest, reach out to me. I'm more than happy to, to listen to you. So the only thing I request is that if, if, if we're communicating back and forth and you think that we've run our course, that you just kind of let me know instead of just dropping out. Uh, I've got like four people who have just dropped out of conversations and I don't know what that means. And it's a little worrisome to me. Uh, like I've said before, given the, the nature of our coming together and what we're dealing with, if someone just disappears, it's, it's a little unsettling. So yeah, you know, please, if, if you could do that, if we strike up a conversation. So everybody out there who's listening, um, thanks. Kate in Australia, how are you doing? Um, Carolyn in England. And Johnny, again, Johnny, if you're still listening, um, great. Hey, how you doing? So that's it, guys. I've rambled plenty. And uh, everybody be safe and be well. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.